Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well. I hope you guys had a really nice Monday. Um, I am having a good day, um, though all I think about right now is food because I'm currently on a diet and all I really want um, is chips. That's all I keep thinking about, chips and guacamole. It's sort of been the thing that I dream about at night. So uh, there you go. There's a little look into my life today. Um, I'm coming to you guys today with part one of my August book haul. I was going to try to do this in one whole thing, but I just have too many books to tell you guys about. And I think you're gonna wanna hear about all of them. So as I always say before I do a book haul, make sure that you get out your paper, your pen, your Goodreads, however you keep track of what's gonna wind up on your TBR. Um, some of these books are out, some of them are not, some of them sent to me by publishers, some of them that I have read myself, and a few of them are actually from Book Expo America, sort of some reminders and uh, things that are coming out or have just come out for you guys. So we better get started because this is going to be a long video if I don't talk. So the first book I just want to remind you guys about, I talked about in my um, Book Expo America Big Buzz video, um, is Ohio by Stephen Markley. This book actually came out this month on the 21st of August, so it is out and available. Um, as I told you guys in my prior video, this was sold as a cross between A Little Life by Hanaganagahara and um, Hillbilly Elegy. Uh, by J.D. Vance, I believe is his name. Um, uh, this is the story of four friends who meet up years later in a small town in Ohio and all of the drama that goes with that. Um, I've been putting this off. I'm going to, I think, do a big book month where I just read three or four big books and I am super excited to get to this one. So I'm, gonna, I'm saving it for that. And um, I have heard nothing but excellent reviews of Ohio by Stephen Markley, and it is out and available. So definitely, if that sounds up your alley, go pick it up, okay? The next book um, was kindly sent to me by Riverhead Books when I requested another book that will come up later in this um, uh, discussion. And um, it came out on August 21st as well. And I just think the cover of this is gorgeous. But this is The Air You Breathe by Francis de Pontes Pebbles. I think that may be one of the most fantastic author names I have ever heard. Um, this novel is set, um, or starts actually, in 1930s Brazil on a plantation where two young girls meet each other. I'm gonna try to remember. Um, Doris is working in the kitchen. And um, Gra Grassa, Grassa, I think is how we're going to say that, um, is the spoiled daughter of the wealthy plantation owner. The girls meet, the friendship ensues, music brings them together. One can sing really well and one writes amazing songs and lyrics. And that takes them away from the lives that they were born into. One of them will be a star and one of them will not and the drama that is that. I will tell you, I sat down when this came in because I hadn't heard of it, um, and I read about the first 50 pages, and it is it is going to be, if you guys like that sort of historical um, friendship drama um, with just a, an amazing sense of place, I think this book is going to be for you. So that is The Air You Breathe by Francis de Pont Pontes, pebbles and uh, i want to again thank riverhead books for sending me a copy and if you don't get a chance follow the author on instagram um she's uh, pretty great and this is already out it was out on august 21st so you can go pick up your copy um, another book that is actually coming out on Tuesday, so tomorrow, is House Girl by Michael Doncor. Now, this book is called Hold in the UK, and I believe it has the same release date, um, but it does have the same amazingly blue cover. Now, this is a book that I started reading, actually, um, right before I sort of entered my slump. I was about 70 pages into it, and everything about it I know I'm going to love, but I just couldn't read. But this story is so compelling. This is the story of two young girls. Well, three young girls. <laughs> um, what, two young girls at the beginning of the book are house, uh, house um, servants to a couple in the country. They were sold um, different by different mothers to this family um, for, to work as house girls. At the start of the book, 
the main character is being shipped off to a city to work for a wealthy family to more or less infiltrate the world of their daughter who they are having a hard time connecting with and they don't know what she's doing in life. So they bring in this young lady to work in their house but also sort of become their daughter's friend. That is as far as I've got. It is really well written. It is really compelling. I know I'll be getting back to this. Um, it was one of the books when I talked about it, I was like, I know I'm going to love it. I know it was just my reading slump at the time, but he is an amazing writer. This book is really good. Um, so this comes out on August 28th from Picador. Oh, Picador did send me this. So thank you very much, Picador. Um, and that's House Girl by Michael Doncor. So there you go. Okay. Another book sent to me by the publisher, more more sent to me by the author. Um, and I am just going to hold up the name, but the name of the book is White Dance Elef uh, White Dancing Elephants, um, stories by Chaya, and there you go with her last name. Um, I will butcher that, so I'm not going to even try because I don't want to do this to her. Um, this was the winner of the Dazank Short Story Collection Prize, and this is published by the same publisher, and it is out in October. Um, and this got actually a fairly positive review from Publishers Weekly this week. So if you get that magazine, you can get even more details. And um, this is a short story collection that focuses on the Asian female queer perspective all of that. Um, and I think that it's going to have a unique voice, something that we probably haven't heard a lot from. Um, and I know that she's coming to a lot of cities. She's going to be in my area in October. So if you're looking for something different, if you're looking for a short story collection from a unique perspective, I think that White Dancing Elephants by Chaya, and there's her last name again, um, uh, will probably fit that niche for you. And it comes out in October. Cool. Okay, the next book that's on this list is an oldie but a goodie, I am told. So Patrick Gale is an author that I have always meant to read, and I don't know why I haven't read him. So I asked Simon Savage on Twitter, I believe, to recommend me where to start with Patrick Gale, and he recommended Rough Music. So I ordered this. I had to actually order it through Book Depository because it is not very easy to get Patrick Gale books in the US. But Rough Music is the story of Julian. Now, I guess Julian is, the. there's two parts. He is a child on holiday in North Cornwall and his American family comes over and that's part of the story. The other part of the story is him as an adult looking back and it says here, he reflects on the realities of his parents' marriage and to recognize that the happy, cheerful boyhood he thought was his is infused with secrets, loss, and a memory of materials that have shaped his life. I think that sounds fantastic. So I'm so glad Simon recommended this one to me. Um, I'm actually going to be taking this on a trip with me because I am really ready to dive into this. Um, I actually bought another one too, which you guys will see in another book haul. Cool. So I'm about to start Patrick Gale. Are you guys Patrick Gale fans? Where should I go? The other day, anytime I get surprise mail from Europa Editions, it is always a way for my day to get a little bit better. And they sent me a copy of Amelia Notham's Strike Your Heart. This is translated, I want to say, from the French by Alison Anderson, translated from the French. Um, I'm going to read this to you. It's a short blurb, but I think it's so compelling. It says, Diane is raised by a mother so plagued by jealousy of her own daughter that she is incapable of showing affection to her. Despite this, Diane grows up to become a brilliant young woman who rejects societal expectation. She forges her own path, dismissing suitors and pursuing her dream of becoming a cardiologist. At university, she befriends an assistant professor, Olivia. Intelligent and cold, Olivia's ambitions and need to feel superior of others drags Diane down to a dark place. This is the story of Diane's relationship with other women. I think that sounds amazing. I think this cover is flipping fantastic. So that is Emil Notham's Strike Your Heart. I'm sure that has a better pronunciation. This is translated from the French by Allison. Oh, Allison Anderson. So there you go. Europa, you can never do wrong. And speaking of um, 
small publishers that can never treat you poorly. We're going to talk about Tor.com right now. And th this is the first novella that I picked up from them. I bought this for myself. This is Passing Strange by Ellen Claggs. Claggs? And this takes place in 1940s um, San Francisco. But I have a feeling that it has sort of a bit of magic and mysteriousness to it. This was actually recommended to me by both Joss of Scribbles Reads and Emily of Possibly Literate. Um, and I just love the back. It says, um, tourists flock to the cities with the, within the, the cities, the magic city of the World's Fair on an island created of artifice and illusion, the forbidden city of Chinatown, a separate alien world of exotic food and nightclubs that offer authentic experiences straight from the pages of the pulps, and the twilight world of the forbidden love where outcasts from conventional society can meet. Six women find their lives as tangled with each other's as they are with the city they call home. You guys, come on. Does that sound, not sound amazing? Um, so this is Passing Strange by Elaine Cleggs. And again, Tor.com, bought that, had to get it. Those two young ladies recommended it to me. Couldn't not buy it. The next one I got was Zhi Yang's The Descendant of Monsters. This is the third book in their series. Um, I think it's called the Tasserac series. Um, but the first book was The Black Tides of Heaven, which I loved, and then The Red uh, Threads of Fortune, which I thought was even better, and I believe this third book is um, in the same world but involves a spy. I'm not getting myself too much into it because what I love about their books is when Ji Yang writes a book, you just dive into that world. It's the same world, but an amazing story. Um, so I highly recommend the trilogy. I am so excited to read the third book. And um, yeah, so Zhi Yang's The Descendant of Monsters. Um, the next book was actually also sent to me by the publisher. So thank you very much, Scribe. And it is called The Dictionary of Animal Languages by Heidi Sopin Sopinka? Sopinka? I can't hit that P the way that it probably is supposed to be hit. Now, when they asked me if I wanted this book, it was these two sentences that made me say yes. We grant men a right to solitude. Why can't we do the same for women? I thought, well, that premise sounds fantastic. Now, this is the story of Ivory. Ivory is born into a wealthy family in modern in Northern England, sorry, and she's sent to a boarding school and gets educated and she wants a different life. So she moves and escapes to interwar Paris um, where she falls in with the Surrealists. And she has an intense love affair with a Russian painter and her ambitions to create Ivory's life is violently interrupted by the Second World War. She flees from Europe, leaving behind her friends, her art, and her love. One, I think this cover is amazing. Two, I think that sounds fantastic. And yeah, I cannot wait to get and dive into this. So again, thank you, Scribe, for sending me a copy. Um, I, this book is out now, I do believe. I think, I, let me check real quick before I say that. Um, it, they always give you a little, um, it comes out on September 18th. I am sorry. September 18th, pick up the Dictionaries of Animal Languages by Heidi Sapinka. Sapinka. The next book I requested when I saw, I don't know, I saw it on Instagram. Um, if you guys don't know this about me, I am a huge fan of Zoe Heller's Notes on a Scandal. And this book got a comparison to that. And I think it also has sort of a Lolita sort of uh, tie-in too. And that is Putney by Sofka Zinoviev. And I said that wrong. And... Um, I just, when I saw, heard the blurb on this, I just thought, okay, I got to get this book. And I think it's going to be amazing and uncomfortable. And uh, yeah. So it says, a rising star in the London's art scene in the early 70s, gifted composer Ralph Boyd is approached by a renowned novelist, Edmund Greenslay, to score a stage adaptation of his most favorite work. Welcomed into Edmund's sprawling bohemian house, in Putney, an artistic and prosperous district in southwest London. The musical Wonder Clint is introduced to Edmund's beautiful activist wife, Ailey, his aloof son, Theo, and his nine-year-old daughter, Daphne, who becomes Ralph's muse. Ralph showers Daphne with tokens of his affection, clandestine gifts, and secret notes. In a home that is exciting but often lonely, Daphne finds Ralph to be a dazzling companion. 
Their bond remains strong even after Ralph becomes a husband and father. And though Ralph worships Daphne, he does not touch her. But in the summer of 1976, when Ralph accompanies 13-year-old Daphne alone to meet her parents in Greece, their relationship intensifies irrevocably. One person knows of their passionate trysts, Daphne's best friend Jane, whose awe of the intoxicating Greensleigh family ensures her silence. Does that not sound so good? I could not have done that justice. I could not have summarized all of that in a way that would make you want to read it. You want to read it. This book come out, came out on August 18th. It is out there. Go get it. I want to thank very much to Harper for sending me a copy. Um, and yeah, I'm going to dive into this one. I, I have a feeling soon, soon, soon. The last book that I am going to mention um, has one of, is one of the most unique covers that I have ever, ever seen. This is the Proof Edition by One World, which I think is a subsidiary of Random House. So I want to thank them for sending me a copy. The reason I requested this book is because I saw it on Instagram and then later saw Roxanne Gay was reading it and talking about it. And then my friend, Michael Kindness, was like, oh, I'm reading that and it's amazing. So this is We Cast a Shadow by Maurice Carlos Ruffin. Now, how do I describe this book? This book is a futuristic tale about racism. We have a main character who is a lawyer and he has a son who is half black, half white, half white. And racism is just, it's just everywhere. It's becoming more and more rampant. But what has happened is there is now a procedure that you can purchase that will turn you white. And the father character in our book wants to do this for his son so his son does not have to face racism, as is in this future world. But in order to do so, he has to become one of the few black partners in a law firm for which he works. So all of that is enough. This book sounds fantastic. So that is We Cast a Shadow by Maurice Carlos Ruffin. I'm going to hold this close so you guys can get a look at that cover. So this is an apple, and those are little boys, uh, the head of a little boy. I think, you guys, yes, add this to your list. I think this does not come out for a while. I think it doesn't come out until, I want to say, February of next year. Um, but put it on your list. Pre-order it, because I think it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a, a world changer. I think it's going to be a world changer. Um, and it got references online to Get Out, the movie, it's The Sellout by Paul, uh, Paul Beatty. So if you like that kind of stuff, I think that this is going to be the book for you. So aren't you glad that I'm going to turn my book haul into two videos? Because this one is already 18 minutes. So as always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. If you are new to my channel, I hope you like what you saw and I hope you pick up a bunch of these books. As always, happy reading and until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye!